I'm going to just take here with my review of the Wrecked Op 4. This is made by Umarex, who specializes in a lot of pellet, BB, airsoft, and other uh, non-foam specialties. This, however, is their second foray into the foam flinging realm. And this being the first magazine-fed one, their first option was the Op 6 pistol, which was a front-load single shot. This is a CO2-powered mag-fed pump action blaster that thankfully is actually cross compatible with all magazines and it's available directly through Rex website which I'll put a link in the description below it retails for the whopping sum of $90 and yes I actually did purchase this one with my own money did not have this sent to me you're going to get a first-hand experience of whether I felt my spending was worthwhile this blaster, as I'll get to the uh, features and functions here, you do have to pump it to load it. You are not really priming it. The, the smoothness is something you won't ever feel with another kind of blaster. There is no resistance for the first three-fourths of that pull. You only feel anything right there at the back. And that's just activating the mechanism. Now, I said... It was compatible with other magazines. Here's a Worker 22 going in. Personally, I think this has the most visual appeal to it. And for those of you who are drum fanatics, yes, it does take both 25 and 35 round Nerf drums. No problem. Tends to be what I use a lot of times when I'm trying to do a lot of testing real quick. I'll use the 22s or I'll use the drums. Very smooth action. And you do also get a three position adjustable stock that you activate like most, extend it all the way out, extend it all the way in, or to remove it, instead of extending it, you pull the tab the other way and then off you go. That's how you access the CO2 cartridges. To install them, you install them back to back, one aiming this way, one aiming that way, Screw this back in, puncture them, and you're powered up. At the back, you have your CO2 activation point. Now remember, this takes two of them. You have to put them in back to back. So undo that, and then also get this centered here. You undo this. See, I have completely unscrewed this all the way back to off. Now we're going to unscrew the cap. There we are. Now, quick tip for those of you not familiar with CO2. You will need some CO2 cartridge lubricant. You put a drop on each. And got a little spill there, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. So, first one goes in, facing in. Okay? We're not going to push it all the way in yet. Next one goes back up to that. I go dropping my lubricant. We we'll back that in. Then we place this on, and we're going to snug that up. Going to snug snug that up all the way. Make sure it's in, and now we're going to actually puncture the two CO2 cartridges. And you'll hear it actually activate. I heard the first and then the second. And now we'll fire a few dry shots. And unlike Nerf blasters with spring power, which that's normally what I use, the spring powered blasters, you do actually want to cycle your first few with no dart because you'll be actually lubricating the system. Okay, now time to load up the Worker 22 mag and we'll do some testing. Ninety-nine point nine, one seventeen point one. I think it's time to get a new net. What do you guys think? 
flopping over. Okay, here we are. 117.5 115 <laughs> 123 error 77.7 101.6 111.9 112.9 even 125.3 105, 87.3, 108.9, and dry. Okay, so there's a pretty good variation of what to expect. It's going to be very familiar to those of you out there who have used some, some of the CO2-powered BB or pellet rifles, and a lot of them out there actually have the exact same, almost, almost exact same molding as this. Now, it does come also with a sight system, which is very similar to the uh, common found ones on some airsoft, you know, say like toy grade instead of hobby grade. You do actually have a flippable rear sight. You have a loop as well as a little peep sight. I found I used the loop pretty much the entire time because it's not accurate enough to warrant the, uh, the peep sight. It doesn't have a scar attachment. It doesn't have any kind of rifling. It does have a metal barrel. And it is a semi-sealed breech. I'll say semi-sealed breech because it actually has the breech that just, it's a push style. And it pushes the dart, but it doesn't seal. The best way I could describe it is it's literally a surface hitting a surface. And when firing it, When firing it with fresh cartridges, you'll actually see a puff of CO2 come out where the uh, jam door is, which, by the way, right there. And that is actually something I, that I think they could improve on. I'm going into the opinions to the end of the video, but that is something I think they could improve on is the actual breach and seal. But that is the jam door. Didn't really have any jams, especially not due to... The, the uh, blaster itself, I did have one that was more on me. First dart in the magazine, pushed forward a little too far. It was enough for the breech to catch it and flip it and fold it over. Now, on to the features and functions of it and overall construction. I actually find that this is probably the most well-made production blaster on the market. There is literally zero creaks zero movement, zero anything. You could, literally feels like you could take this as a melee weapon. <laughs> but overall, the the construction of this is top grade. I actually use my wife as a kind of sounding board sometimes, handing blasters to her to get her kind of unbiased opinion. Because she doesn't, she doesn't have bias of any way, which way, shape, or form. She'll just use it, have some fun, and she'll tell me what she thinks. Well, she found that after giving her a Jet Blaster Sita first, as something to kind of, I wanted to gauge what she thought in comparison to something else in the same ballpark of price range. Handed her that, let her mess around with it a little bit. Took it back, handed her this. She immediately commented on how solid it felt and how heavy it was, because there is a lot of metal inside and it does have some weight to it. It's about triple the weight of a Sita. So you feel that when, when you go from one to the other. Now, in the realm of things, it's not heavy. But it does have weight and heft compared to your typical blaster. Also, it's very smooth. It's very smooth and easy to use. Again, that prime, is only you only feel a little bit of spring resistance here. And that's a tension spring instead of a, a compression spring. Big difference. Tension springs have their own little feel to them. And this, this feels real smooth. Like, 
ultra, ultra smooth. It's almost like it's gliding on bearings. That's, that's how smooth that feels. And as far as the durability of it being able to get shots on the cartridges, I, I consistently have been able to get at least around 100 to 150 shots without a noticeable loss of power. It, and it varies wildly. I mean, if I'm careful, taking real nice, slow, steady shots every once in a while, and not stressing the cartridges, I can get way up there closer to like 130, 140. But now if I rapid fire it, like on my first set of cartridges, that I, my very first ones opening up, which they're always the worst performing, I got pretty bad performance, but I was intentionally stressing it. And that's how you kind of have to keep that in mind. It's not a spring blaster. It's not a flywheeler. It's a CO2 blaster. And repetitive firing, just pow, 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 pow. You're emptying a mag. You're going to stress it. And even by the end of that mag, you're going to feel the stock get cold. And your, your performance will start falling by the end of that mag. And then you let it rest and it'll come, it'll come right back up. And just to do that, I stress tested it by firing it real fast. And then I brought it inside, because it's about 50 degrees outside, 55, and right now, as I'm recording this, it's more like about 35, and it's not getting real good performance in the cold when you fire it fast. Combine those two things, might be something to consider. Indoors, firing it slowly, you get good performance, and you'll maintain that 100 plus velocity for a long time. And you also get more shots out of the cartridges. So something to consider that's a quirk of the system. And that it, you need to know going into this. Same thing applies to uh, CO2 powered BB pistols, pellet rifles, and airsoft that, and paintball that run off CO2. Stress the system, your performance suffers. And unfortunately, that's something that they're going to have to live with when they're running on that kind of cartridge system. Because the cartridges are worse for it than even the larger tanks. But overall, my opinions. My opinions of the Wrecked Op 4. I sit here staring at it, trying to formulate in my head how to put it into words. I'm very torn. At $90 price tag, running off of a CO2 based power plant, you're going to have people who absolutely are not going to want it. $90 is a lot for a blaster to, not to run on their parade, but the Jet Blaster Cita is right there. And especially when some of the sellers do have sales on the Cita, it would be very, very hard to see anybody purchasing this over a Cita. And one that's completely off the wall. But I would have a hard time purchasing this over the Colonel Wasp Firefly, which I already have one of those coming on the way. <laughs> but I'm using those as things to compare because they're things I've also purchased with my own money. And looking at my purchase of each, I'd be hard pressed to pick this over those. Now, I love the construction of it. This thing is superior built to everything in my arsenal. I don't have another blaster that I could say is built better than this. Surprisingly, the only thing that comes close is some of the Boomco stuff. But everything else, I don't have anything else until you get to my actual, like, airsoft and, and uh, actual steel and lead firing things that I have. And yeah, I'm pointing at my, pointing at my gun safe, or gun cabinet. I made it, my, I built it myself. But pointing over there at that, because until it comes to, like, my target rifles, my pellet rifles that I use to actually for target shooting. Until I get to that, I don't have anything that is built as well as this. And I like that. I like the quality. But with what some are going to find who don't have experience with it, they're going to find this to be a finicky power plant that at times can have a loss of efficiency when stressed. And $90 price tag is a lot to try to sell. That is. I mean, its main selling points would be very easy to use. I mean, somebody with very little strength can 
operate this, no problem. My wife can fling shots real fast, and she's 5'2", and very little. She could be competitive with this. She can also be competitive with the Sita. <laughs> she can also be competitive with the flywheeler. It's there's a hard a hard sell there. So as you can see coming through, I'm sure it's going to come through the camera right under your screen. I'm torn, uh, and there's there's no other way to put it. I can't put a hard recommendation or a do not recommend because there's good and bad, and I don't know. I don't know if there's more enough of one or the other to say one way or the other, and I hate doing that. But I am in some of this this little middle ground limbo world <laughs> with this blaster. I do kind of like it. I do kind of not like it. It's expensive. If I had to rebuy it, would I? I don't know. I might, <laughs> and then again, I might not. And I hate leaving you guys hanging like that. Because you guys and girls out there who watch me, I, I know you look for an opinion one way or the other. And the best thing I can say is this. If you consider the uniqueness of this before you click purchase, go check the CETA out. I haven't put my video out on it, but just go check that blaster out. If you go look at that blaster and you're still intrigued by the uniqueness of this, then maybe you should give it a try. Because I think most of the people are going to look at this and say, no. I think most people, they're going to look at it and say, no, I absolutely don't want CO2. No, I don't want to spend $90. Or they're going to look at it and say, you know what? I do want to give that a shot. And I think that's going to come down to, you look at it, you hear the performance. And I did see another YouTube review who put on the thumbnail 162 feet per second and I commented down below that I I didn't see them ever test it and they said they used a different chronograph of a friends and got 162 feet per second shot I'm gonna go on record saying I don't believe that shot I think they had it a either ultra lucky shot or that chronograph was in error I could not after hundreds of shots fired through my chronograph get anything over what was shown on camera I think I had a high 120 something shot there, like 128, 129. That was the highest shot that I ever recorded, period. And I already think that those were a few really, really good shots. They claim 90 feet per second for a $90 blaster. That's a dollar per foot. And that's a big price. That's a big price tag to swallow. And that's how I'm going to end my review. I do hope you enjoyed watching this. And I'm I do apologize if it's too long, but I don't have a way of condensing my thoughts down on something like this. I feel like I need to spill it all the way out like I'm doing right now. <laughs> but again, I do hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that I was able to at least give you a little bit of first-hand experience that you can use to better make your decision of whether you should plop down your almost $100 bill on something like this or not. And if you're still interested... If you still are intrigued, just like I was when I clicked purchase, I will put that link down below. But I do really hope you enjoyed watching my content, and I do thank you if you stuck all the way to the end here. Smuggers Shake, till next time.